Hello, my name is Peter Lawrence and I'm pleased to introduce the April issue of the Journal of Vascular Surgery and to highlight four outstanding papers which are freely available for the next two months. Our editor's choice in CME article is Treatment of Carotid Stenosis in Asymptomatic Non-Octogerian Standard Risk Patients with Stenting versus Endarterectomy Trials by Matsumura and co-authors. They compared the outcomes of two randomized trials in asymptomatic, less than 80-year-old patients treated with transfemoral carotid artery stenting or carotid endarterectomy. 2,544 patients that were less than 80 years old with a greater than 70% asymptomatic carotid stenosis were randomized to either carotid artery stenting or carotid endarterectomy with a composite endpoint of stroke myocardial infarction or death during the periprocedural period and or ipsilateral stroke within four years after randomization. There was no significant difference in primary endpoints between the stenting group and the endarterectomy group, which were 5.3 and 5.1 percent. Periprocedural rates of carotid artery stenting versus carotid endarterectomy for any stroke were 2.7 versus 1.5 percent, but myocardial infarction was 0.6 versus 1.7 percent, and any stroke or death was 2.7 versus 1.6 percent. After the initial period, the rates of ipsilateral stroke were similar at 2.3 versus 2.2 percent. The authors concluded that in asymptomatic non-octogenarian patients, carotid artery stenting with a transfemoral approach achieves comparable short and long-term results to carotid endarterectomy. The next article is predictors of mortality in non-agenarians or those over 90 years old undergoing abdominal aortic aneurysm repair. Analysis of the National Surgical Quality Improvement Program Data Set, or NSQIP, by Kumar et al. They identify predictors of 30-day mortality for non-agenarians undergoing endovascular aortic aneurysm repair, or EVAR, or open surgical repair, OSR. The EVAR group had a 30-day mortality of 2.6% and was also 28.6% in emergent cases, while the open surgery group had a 30-day mortality of 19% in elective cases and 53.7% in emergent cases. Patients over 90 years who died had a greater incidence of dependent functional status, a higher ASA classification, a higher perioperative blood transfusion need, postoperative pneumonia, mechanical ventilation of more than 48 hours, and acute renal failure. The EVAR group who died had significantly greater incidence of dependent functional status, ASA classification of higher than four, perioperative blood transfusion, emergency surgery, and longer OR times. The authors concluded that non-agenarians had an acceptable risk of 30-day mortality with EVAR in elective and emergent cases compared with octogenarians. The next article by Tran and co-authors is hospital-based delays to revascularization increased risk for postoperative mortality and short bowel syndrome in acute mesenteric ischemia. Acute mesenteric ischemia is a surgical emergency for which delays in treatment have been closely associated with a high morbidity and mortality. All patients who underwent surgery for acute mesenteric ischemia from a multi-center hospital system were divided into two groups based on the timeliness of mesenteric revascularization. Of 212 patients with acute ischemia, 99 received early revascularization, while 113 patients experienced the delay in revascularization. Among the delay group, 26% had a delayed vascular consultation, 
all vascular surgery was deferred until after the initial operation in 17 percent and 24 percent were never revascularized during admission the authors concluded that a delay in revascularization was a significant predictor of 30-day and two-year mortality. Delayed revascularization was also independently associated with a increased bowel length resection or loss of bowel. The final article by Mink and, and contributors is Outcomes of Carotid Artery Stenting in Patients with Radiation Arteritis compares to those with atherosclerotic disease. Head and neck malignancies are often treated with radiation, and it's estimated that approximately 30% will develop a stenosis in their carotid bulb or carotid artery of more than 50%. Since surgery in radiated necks has a higher rate of complications, carotid artery stenting has become primary therapy. Using the VQI database from 2016 to 2019, 1,199, or 17% of carotid artery stenting cases, had prior radiation therapy to the neck. There was a significant difference in three-year mortality of 9.4% versus 7.5% in those with and without prior radiation to their neck. There was no increase in perioperative MI, in-hospital mortality, ipsilateral or contralateral stroke, restenosis, or reintervention in the patients who were treated with radiation. For this high-risk group, carotid artery stenting provides the same patency as it does for atherosclerotic carotid stenosis, while avoiding potentially morbid cranial nerve injury and wound healing complications. Thank you for watching. For more information, please follow us on social media and remember to like, comment, and share. We hope you enjoyed these four highlighted papers and the other excellent papers in this month's Journal of Vascular Surgery. Remember that these articles are free to read until the end of June. And thank you for your attention.